Hi everyone. Long time no see, right? So I started this project over on the IOD Facebook page and I'm getting ready to add my second transfer. Um, just there was a time restraint. So I want to go ahead and finish it up here for you guys live for those of you that are joining me over from the page. And um, I left you with my um, label and Femera on the project. Let me find you on my page here. Here we go. Hopefully I can see comments here too. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful, guys. I'm obsessed with these. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna get my market on here first so that I can get this little tiny piece removed. And I wanna get this in the frame to show you guys how awesome this looks. When you're dealing with words, it's a little trickier than with an image design. Because if you mess up on your words, it's a little harder to, to fix. You can do it, but it's just a little more difficult. Let me get my words on here from the market first. Get my lines on here. Like I was saying over on the IOD page, this is my new obsession, this paper. It's so pretty. I'm even wondering if I can start up with a small one and do use my sheet as a decoupage. Hi, Valerie. Okay. <clears throat> I've got a little bit of a tickle in here in my throat. Let's take that little tape off. I'm just going to keep right on going. Valerie, have you used the wallflowers or the label Infamera? Okay, first one is on. Ready? Flip it around. And it's on. So pretty. Love, love, love. So like I mentioned, the words are a little trickier. than your images. So it may, it may take me a minute here, but we will, we will get this on. I wanna show you guys the finished project in the frame, in our aged mirror frame. The tinier the words too, the more stubborn they can be. So when someone wants to start their very first transfer with, say, this one or um, La Petite, I tell them do a different one first. Don't want you getting frustrated with the process because it's not hard. You just have to be patient. Not yet, but I'm cleaning to, ooh, winky wink. I, I love the vintage mirrors. I love the vintage mirror look. Doesn't necessarily have to be a mirror. 
my feature wall in my bathroom over my tub I did in mirror tiles that I um, faux antiqued up and it's the entire wall and I love it every time I'm in my tub in the evening I just go oh, I just love it remember in the I think it was the 70s everybody had those smoked um, glass tiles like in their entryway and they were glued on there and you could never get them off those are like what I used and one day I'll have to give you guys a little tour because we DIY our entire house because I mean let's face it who has that in their budget to do these beautiful ideas you see on HGTV. If you're creative, there's all kinds of ways to get around it and do a faux design. And that's kind of what I did in my house. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around so I can get another angle. So pretty, you guys. And you don't have to paint with colors on your sheet. You can totally do a white. Use that sheet up. Don't buy extra papers. Don't buy extra stuff to put in there. And if you tried doing your transfers on canvas, it's not easy. So this kind of gives you that canvas look without having to buy the separate canvas. Okay. Next row of words. And again, the grids keep everything straight for me. No measuring. whole sheet with the words on it because it really does look like fabric and it even has the, the feel of fabric okay remember what I said going one direction and another direction can help because even if you don't think something has texture to it it does just use sections of it you don't have to use the whole thing even like if this is one section you don't have to use the whole thing you can just cut out line by line and use them where you want maybe do a little um, graffiti style dresser it's not that you can um, read or interpret what the words say it's the idea that script is faded onto your piece. 
right? Sometimes it matters what the words say, like on a sign. I like script, any kind, any size. done with this sheet. It goes pretty quickly. As I'm looking at our windows over the farm, I literally cannot see maybe 300 feet. It is so foggy today. Must mean that snow's coming maybe. I think I, I heard that on the news this morning. Anybody back east on there? Do you guys have snow yet? Hi Kay. For joining me, I will go back over the whole thing in just a minute. So anybody joining late will, will know what we did. I'm going to fold it back over again, give myself a little air bubble. I, there's a sneak peek, right? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. If you guys are liking what you see, be sure to share. I can't keep doing what I do unless you guys share. Okay. And I've got another similar um, project to do on Thursday on the IOD page. So if you guys want to put that on your calendar, and it's a completely different look than this. And that one will be placed. Um, we'll be doing different colors. There'll be some some violets, some purples, some pinks, turquoise. And that's all I can say, because it's a secret. And it's for um, some of the designs that are retiring from IOD to make room for new designs. So all day on the 9th on the IOD paint page, Stockus will be going live with different transfers that are being um, retired to give you ideas for projects, to show you their favorite project using that transfer. Turn it this way, fold it again. The folding really helps me, especially when I'm doing a full sheet. You just have to be careful. On my sides, I don't want to tear anything. Like I said, we're almost done. I'm going to put this baby in the frame. Okay. Like I said, sometimes it helps to go a different direction. Lift 
it again. Get me a little air pocket going. Like I mentioned before, the little tiny words are going to be the trickiest with your transfers. But they look so good. I'm getting close to my edge. I gotta be very careful so I don't uh, like squidgy the edges up. Hi, James Angela. I remember you from the other page. How are you? Thank you for coming over. Be sure you guys follow me on the Withered Barn Boutique because I'm updating my home. And I take you guys on that journey, adding some color, adding some art, showing you how I DIY everything because we don't have that kind of stuff in the budget to just hire somebody to come in or go buy everything new. So I DIY everything. And what's that saying? When you've got champagne taste on a beer budget, that's my home. <laughs> but I don't want it to look like a beer budget. Okay, we're almost there. Oh my lordy lordy, this is going to be so pretty. You guys get to see the frame, and I vintaged it up a little bit. And we'll see if I've got enough in there or not enough and we'll add some maybe or take some away and you'll see what I did on the frame. Edges are always tricky when I'm doing it on the paper. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. Ready? I'm going to take it off. Oh. So you can see it is like a tapestry. It's soft. It's beautiful. So we're going to put this in the frame. Right here. Let me grab the frame. I did not take the glass out. So here's my wood frame. I'm gonna slide my paper up under it. And I see some finger smudges, so I wanna clean those off real quick before we go any further. Just with a paper towel, I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of water. I don't need to put any chemical on there. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna stay away from my edges, but I kind of did that faux antique to look. I may wanna back it off a little bit and wipe some off, and I'll show you guys how to do that. If you don't like your antiquing that you did, just clean it off with a little bit of vinegar and your finger, and we'll scrape it right off. So that looks dry. I'm going to put my paper back in, flipping it this direction. See, I did it right on the picture frame picture. I'm going to put the board back in just to hold my paper, but I'm not going to bend my tacks back yet because I want to look at it. I want to see if my vintage -y look is too much or not enough. And I think it's perfect. I've got just enough gold. So let me put this up. I'm going to flip it over. And we're going to put the tacks in it so you guys can see a full view. 
I think it looks great. I don't need to add any gold. I don't need to add any silver. Let me find my screwdriver. So all I did was put the frame back together with my transfer in. Oops, I missed one. That'll definitely break the glass, huh? Push, guys. Okay, hold the phone. My glass is messed up. This is what happens, right? Let me let me set this on the floor. I don't want to put it on the there. One, two. Good thing I saw that, or I would have pushed on the glass and we'd have shattered my glass. So it looks like the little tabbies got on the wrong side here. I don't want to push, guys. It's not coming out. Oh, no. Let me see if I can lay it the other way, if it'll pop out that way. It was super loose in there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now... Gotta do a little surgery. Hold on just a second. The glass is not wanting to cooperate. There we go. And I definitely don't want to break it, right? Let's see if I can get it out. Yay! I got the glass out. Okay, so you can see right here, my glass, my tongs flipped under the glass. Mm -hmm. That would have been dangerous. Okay, so now I'm going to put the glass back in, hopefully. Be very careful because these bigger pieces of glass will um, bend and crack. So you got to be very careful. And I usually don't even take my glass out for this reason. It doesn't see. Look at it. You guys, I broke it. Ugh. For that reason, I don't take my glass out. But I want to show you guys this. I'm going to have to get another glass made. And it's not going to go back in. Well, it's not going to go back in. This happens. So I'm going to have to get a new piece of glass made. So don't do that. Don't take your glass out, guys. I don't know why my tongue's got into there. So I'm going to show you guys what the finished project's going to look like anyways. Put that there. Put this on here. And I'll be doing this today. I'll be going down to the glass shop today and have them fix that. So I'm going to bend my prongs over so the rest of my glass don't fall out. But I'm not going to press it hard because I don't want it to break. But I do want to show you guys the finished project. Ugh. This is a big in, a big in. There we go. So pay no attention to that. But here is my framed art. Isn't it beautiful? This is going to go in my living room, one of two pieces. They have a slight different color in the background but they're basically the same. So the same, but not the same. Isn't it beautiful? So back to, I think, was it Kay that asked about the glass? I believe, let me see. Catherine, thank you. Hey, it happens, right, Catherine, it happens. I know, don't take your glass out. Try to do your treatment with your glass in, because sometimes your frame is not even straight and you can't get your glass back in the right way. So it's easier to do your treatment with the glass in your frame. But it does happen, especially if you're dealing with old windows and things like that, the glass is not reliable. This happens to be a new frame, semi-thick glass, but I knew once that tong got up under there, it, it was gonna crack it. But what I did with the glass is, on the back side, I flipped my 
um, frame over and I sprayed some water on the corners of my glass because that's usually where glass will antique, right? So I just used a fine mist, squirted some water in my corners of my glass. Then I took some chrome paint. This one is looking glass paint. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be any shiny metallic chrome paint. And I sprayed just a tiny bit, corner along the edges, corner along the edge, and a corner. Then what I do while it's still wet, I take a plastic bag, I turn it inside out so that the colors won't bleed on my paint because it does have chemical in it and it can pull the colors off. So I just wad it up like this and anywhere where my paint is wet, I start daubing. And that gives you like a crackly effect. And I daub until I get the desired look all the way around, all the way around. Then I went, because that's silver, the one I started with, then I went and added some gold metallic with just a popsicle stick, little drops, and did the same thing with my bag, spread it around, and don't twist, because you'll get lines, straight up and down. Straight up and down, all the way. If you get too much paint, use a paper towel, straight up and down, and dab it off. If you don't like it at all, you can just clean it off with some vinegar or a razor and you can start over. So it's however you wanna do it. You don't have to use gold and silver. That's just the colors I like. You could use pinks, you could use purples, you could let your, let your color fly. Do it whatever color you want. But it adds just a hint of an aging effect to your glass and it just makes it a little prettier, um, a little more vintage a little more unique. And I set that aside, glass in my frame to let it dry while I worked on my um, paper insert. And I painted the back of my paper insert right onto the paper because it's good heavy duty, like poster paper. And I did it fairly quickly. I don't saturate it, but I do add a little bit of water. And it gives me this beautiful, fabric look, textile, and it's gorgeous. And my transfers love it. They love to stick to it. So thank you guys for um, joining me. Let me see, is there any more questions? Thank you, Joanne, I appreciate that. Thank you, Catherine, I hope you do try it. Start small, work your way up large. That way you don't get frustrated, but so worth it. I have an entire eight by 10 gallery wall in my hallway. I've got two this size that are going in my living room for my uh, DIY transformation of my home. So oh, hopefully you guys can see me. <laughs> you guys have a great day. I um, am getting ready to be up on the DIY paint page and I'll be starting on some of the furniture in my bedroom. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.